So I, I, I re-recorded this video like five times because of noise, but hopefully this recording here is the magical number right here. So I wanted to say, hello people, how's it going? I'm going to make an off the cuff discussion about a small topic. It's not gonna be anything grandiose. It's not going to be anything that needs like five or six days of editing. There will be some off the cuff virtues with this video. So I will be rambling a bit. I apologize, it comes with the territory, but what we're talking about today is the unwritten rules of video game remakes and why I think half of them are bullshit. We're also going to be talking about categorizing the terms of video game remakes, reimaginings, reboots, and remasters. So first thing is first, let's start off with the first question here. What is a video game remake, reimagining, reboot, or remaster? The reason I bring this up is because people tend to get the terms wrong. They usually say, oh, a video game remaster is a remake when it essentially is not. A lot of people get the idea of a reboot and a reimagining wrong. So what I think a video game remake is, and it's very equivalent to the definition here that we have on screen, a video game remake is taking something that was pre-established and creating it from the ground up, recreating it for a new era, so to speak. So you have like Resident Evil from 1996, the first PlayStation 1 game, and then we jump a few years later into Resident Evil for the GameCube that came out in 2002. It essentially carries over a lot of the same beats, but they decided to expand on sections, add in Lisa Trevor, add in a lot of subplots from the previous release Resident Evil games like Co Veronica and splice this all together into a culminating story that has all this buildup and feels a bit more connected to the timeline. As I mentioned, they do a couple of things differently. They take the basic fundamental enemy, which is the zombies, and they decide, hey, if the player shoots them enough times, they will be down but not dead. Later on, let's say five or 10 minutes pass, you pass the body of the zombie that is downed. If you don't burn him with kerosene, he gets back up and turns into a crimson head and he runs after you. And we never had running zombies in Resident Evil, at least I think until that point. So they do something different. Same game, some different results. They decide to make things again, but differently. Hence, this is what a remake entails. Next, we have a reimagining. A reimagining is taking the fundamentals of a game and maybe it won't be entirely one for one. Maybe it'll have like different elements that are way, way too different and radical to be considered a remake. A lot of people classify Resident Evil 2 remake in this category, but I think you know, there are probably other games that fit this description a lot better where they took something and they turned it into something alternate. I think a good example would be Dead Rising 2 off the record versus the original Dead Rising. With that game, and I apologize if you hear like any shitty hip hop, I went to close my window for a second. With Dead Rising 2, they took the protagonist of Chuck Green out of Off the Record and replaced him with Frank West. They made a non-canon scenario that has all of the elements from Dead Rising 2 implemented in, and they simply recreated it and warped the story to go around Frank West. What would Frank West do in a situation if he was caught in the events of Dead Rising 2? And there we have it. There's your reimagining where things are kind of the same, but not really because you have that drastic alternate storyline take and you have an entirely new characters in the shoes of the original protagonist. So things are widely reimagined. Things are widely changed. They actually took a big piece of the puzzle out and you still have the same gameplay experience, but you have something new for the plot, which is something that is not canon to the original events as far as we know. That is a reimagining where 
you do something the same but it's largely different and it's not really appearing to the original formula via a storyline perspective a gameplay perspective things can change dramatically at this point we have the connotations of video game reboots and i don't think a lot of people really keep up with the differing connotations between a soft reboot and a hard reboot a hard reboot is when you decide to say fuck it we, we're done with the previous series we're done with it or we're temporarily done with it let's start the entire slate over from a gameplay perspective and maybe a story perspective sometimes original gameplay elements can remain intact but you're essentially starting over with the franchise and you're trying to introduce it to a new audience that's a hard reboot you're resetting things you're taking away connections you're implementing new connections new characters new story arcs and you're changing core fundamentals that might be received for better or for worse then we have a soft reboot which it i think a good example is god of war 2018 where they basically take all the old gameplay and throw it out of the window for the sake of new gameplay with rpg elements but the story is still the same so a soft reboot is changing previously established gameplay in my opinion but you're keeping all the lore all the characters you're keeping everything else you're not throwing the baby out with the bath water and i i think you know this is what people need to understand with reboots there is a certain time a certain place when it's necessary to reboot a series either the series was failing financially or sometimes people can do reboots for no fucking reason when the series was white hot just like they did with dmc dmc the devil may cry reboot now we're gonna move on to the terminology of a remaster a remaster is taking a previously established game and then just putting like better graphics on it making it you know hd taking standard definition into high definition possibly there are also moments where they add in extra content but it is essentially the same product you're just playing it with better graphics and sometimes you might get extra content if you're lucky and that's a remaster a remaster is taking the graphics updating those set graphics and letting you play on modern consoles now we're gonna get into the unwritten rule of remakes which is a fucking headache i i honestly hate talking about this the unwritten rule of remakes but this is what i perceived from being mostly in the resident evil community seeing how people establish these rules and how uh, I want to break down why it's kind of bullshit. So the unwritten rule of remakes is that apparently you cannot change the remake significantly or there cannot be any gameplay reboots or hard resets to the gameplay for a remake in order for it to be a remake. I just want to have a small moment of silence for you to process that. You cannot make things somewhat differently in a remake. And I've made this sort of discussion before where there are those horror remakes that are vastly different from the original counterparts to some degree, even though it's seen as a child's play movie, even though it's seen as a Jason movie, it's not 100% a recreation of the original what people want in this regard is almost equivalent to a remaster which is a one-for-one -one remake and a one-for-one -one remake is taking all the familiar elements all the familiar points all the familiar criteria and basically not changing it that much that's what people want for one for one remakes and sometimes they happen sometimes they don't and this is the harsh reality that people have to accept for example you get games like crash bandicoot insane trilogy which is absolutely kind of fateful 
to the originals now granted there are those moments where they have crash 3 jumping physics and it really doesn't work that well with crash bandicoot 1 so there are those weird wacky alterations to one for one remakes that don't really make any sense sometimes but you just roll with it because you're happy you have that nostalgia you're happy that you can put on those nostalgia goggles and try to have fun with that experience because it harkened back to something you loved but again i don't have an issue with a remake being one for one or a reimagining as long as it's good remakes can differ from time to time which is what the resident evil 2 remake did they changed up the gameplay entirely and the gameplay is still fun even as a third person shooter it has better controls i feel it has better animations and no disrespect to the original re2 but i think that the remake is more fun from a gameplay perspective over the original there are things that the original has over the remake that capcom somehow forgot with the a and b scenarios and i don't understand how it's not fully fleshed out with your first and second runs having situations occur that really isn't vastly different when you go to the second scenario i think they flub there but again it has superior gameplay over the original and it's not a one for one it's not a complete one for one like resident evil was in 2002 you know it's like remakes might build things from the ground up but they can make it similar or different depending on how they approach the situation capcom decided not to make it a one for one because like i said before third person horror is really prominent and it just offers better controls and they wanted a more immersive and seamless experience this is why you don't have door loaders anymore this is why there are certain mechanics like tank controls that don't exist in the resident evil 2 remake and i think those mechanics a lot of people said to me on the game facts boards well particularly it was one user that was edward 18 he said that gameplay doesn't age and i think he is incorrect i think gameplay can show us age when you sit down and play something in the past and then you go back to the present and you're like oh this plays a lot better. The controls could have been worked on a lot better for this particular subgenre, for this particular game. And you really can distinguish the two. And a lot of people let their nostalgia blind them to the point where they don't understand this context. And I hate it. I hate when people make these unwritten rules on remakes is something that really needs to die if you enjoy the original resident evil 2 no one is taking that experience away from you if you enjoy the remake no one is taking that away from you as well they have two great games that you could play at any time on any storefront and hey if you enjoy it go boot it up and enjoy yourself but don't make up this unwritten bullshit that remakes need to be always one for one because they really don't next we're going to answer a question which I think I touched on previously, but I guess I'll go over it anyway. When is it necessary to reboot a series? I think it's necessary to reboot a series when you feel the well has dried up, when there's nothing more substantial that you can do with that series from a creative standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, and you need a fresh coat of paint. You don't want the series to die but you also want to do something with it that you find unique either in the hands of other more talented developers or if you have an ambitious project that you could do with this IP and you want to revitalize it for a certain audience that might be current because a lot of reboots come back from the past that are like really old games like Doom. Doom is a really old series. Like I think it's been around since the early 90s and they wanted to bring it back for people in 2016. When it's necessary to reboot a series is the giant question mark. And I think you shouldn't reboot a series when it's white hot and it's getting popularity i mentioned this before i think with devil may cry when they decided to make the dmc reboot devil may cry 4 special edition was already popular it was already 
really prominent it was already well respected by people that's a time when you don't reboot a franchise because people don't hate it they want to see more of the original and you made people wait 11 years before they finally got their hands on a follow-up so i think a franchise should not do this you should not reboot a franchise in the middle of its success and the only time you should is when a franchise is on its dying bed and you're trying to save it in some way and you're gonna say hey uh maybe a reboot would be fine we have nothing else left for this franchise it's not getting a lot of money maybe a resurgence will work this is why i don't mind a dino crisis reboot honestly they can they can get rid of the cliffhanger that was in dino crisis 2 and i would be fine with it because the last time we seen a follow-up to the dino crisis franchise was dino crisis 3 and it was unrelated to 2 as far as we know and yeah that didn't turn out so great dino crisis 3 was a stinker and i think it's time to reboot the series i think it's time to start over and see what new elements you can create with that franchise so yeah i think now would be the perfect time for a reboot of that particular franchise because it really needs it it's not like resident evil where resident evil never stayed dormant at all this is dino crisis it's been dead for a long long time all right so we're moving on to the last one what should tempt you to buy a new remaster when you own the game previously I think there's two reasons of being tempted and number one is kind of it's a little weird but bear with me some people like when a game looks good now I'm not one of those new fags I'm going to enjoy a game that is 8 bit 16 bit 20 bit I don't give a fuck about the time it was created all I care about is the gameplay being superb now there are those moments where playing the game on a previous console maybe it didn't look that great maybe it didn't um really come out too well you know maybe things were fuzzy maybe they had some really really bad jaggies with the graphics maybe the frame rate kind of sucked maybe it dipped below 30 fps and i want to play it at 60 on my pc or something that's when i think it would be great to buy an enhanced version of a remaster if you're willing to go the distance and play the game the way it was intended to be because a lot of games that come out developers do say I, man you know I, I wish we could have done more with this i wish we weren't limited to the technology at the time i wish we had a boost and with other consoles coming out for next generation they could possibly make the game look feel and play better i mean it is what it is with the updated graphics frame rate etc maybe it will help the performance in general if they did have limitations another reason i would buy a remaster well i guess if i didn't have access to the game or console that the remaster was created for like imagine if my ps2 just broke tomorrow and the only option would be to get devil may cry 3 hd collection and i don't feel like hunting down an old copy for dante's awakening maybe i could do that i know the silent hill games themselves are getting highly expensive they really are they're getting up in price so rarity can also be a thing as well on the market where you want that original copy you want that original uh experience but the money the money man sometimes i'm frugal as fuck with money sometimes the money is a little too much and you might want to either emulate it or buy a remastered version and the third reason i guess i i think i said two but fuck it we're going into three the third reason when i would justify buying a remaster is when shut the fuck up dog <laughs> it's a dog outside barking i'm like just shut up anyway the third reason i would justify buying a remaster is if they add in additional content sometimes they do it and i fucking love it i fucking love it i mub the fucking love it chief 
when they put in extra content for a game they really didn't have to like for devil may cry 4 special edition they didn't have to put in virgil but they did anyway and i enjoyed the experience they shouldn't do it with five because i would be pissed buying the same game over when they could have put him as dlc i think he should be i i think they should do the same thing they're doing with street fighter arcade where the vanilla users they don't get fucked over if they bought the game already and their version upgrades to the special edition via dlc so i think when they add in new stuff to an old game and it's really cool it's something cool to see it might invigorate interest for people buying that game because they'll be like hey that content wasn't really available previously i want to get that now you know i want to play with these characters i never played with before these new story arcs these new complete versions of a very popular and established game so hopefully you guys really enjoyed this opinion piece i almost went on for like 20 minutes i think it's like 22 minutes now 21 uh a bit overtime so to speak they had us in the first half but i had to keep going and rambling so i hope you guys really do enjoy this off the cuff discussion about categorizing remakes reimaginings reboots remasters all that good shit and talking about like some of the unwritten rules about remakes and just having a good old discussion uh, i really love doing these off the cuff videos a lot because i get to really just talk and you know be loose with my opinions and really give you guys what's on my mind without putting it on a script you know what i mean and and really just having to uh emote all my thoughts from there and it's written down on a piece of paper i really appreciate that once again if you really enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the discussion be sure to slap a like on that be sure to subscribe share it to your friends let me know what you feel in the comments about this discussion and i will see you guys next time later